Good morning, Larry Seidlinger for LCTV, and once again I'm down at the Lincoln Health Miles campus, and today my guest is Dr. Andrew Russ, who is the Associate Vice President of Medical Affairs down here at Lincoln Health. And Dr. Russ, thank you once again for taking some time. Great, thank you. A few questions for you. Can you give me an update on the COVID-19 uh, in Lincoln, Lincoln County? Absolutely. Uh, so we still do not have any hospitalized patients with COVID-19. We have not during this entire crisis, uh, which is great. We're still prepared to if we need to. Uh, we do have one positive case in Lincoln County, I think probably since the last LCTV update. Uh, and this is interesting in that the first test that we did here, or the test that was done here at our COVID clinic, was uh, inconclusive. Uh, so when it was sent to the, our lab in Scarborough, it was deemed inconclusive, so neither positive nor negative. So then that test gets sent on to the state lab. And it takes longer, three or four days, but that test eventually came back positive. So the patient knew every step of the way uh, that the, tests was, uh, the test was still pending. Uh, she has been informed of her positive tests and is uh, quarantining and doing well. So, good, good deal. Yeah. Uh, do you believe we've been success, successful in flattening the curve here in Lincoln County? Uh, I would say, in general, yes. It's it's difficult to tell. There's a lot of noise in the data. So, uh, in Maine, in general, uh, we had a, a maximum of 65 positive tests on a day in early April. Uh, and then we've had a minimum of eight positive tests on a day in late April. Uh, and then we're back up to 39 positive tests as of a couple of days ago. So in the state, it's been a little bit of an up and down, but hospitalizations statewide have gone down. Uh, people in the intensive care unit with COVID-19 statewide has gone down. So in general, we have a, we have a sense that the curve is flattening. Uh, what's your recommendations for people to remain safe? Uh, our recommendations haven't changed. Uh, you're wearing a mask, I'm wearing a mask. People should continue to mask when they're out in public and they should only go out for necessary services and uh, wash your hands, do all those things that you've been doing for the last, you know, from our standpoint, 52 days, incident day 52. So we know it feels like a long time, but it's important that people continue to follow all those all, all those guidelines anyway uh, Maine Health has announced that it is resuming time sensitive care on Monday what's happening here at Lincoln Health so here at Lincoln Health uh, we're working together with Maine Health uh, in exactly the same protocols um, resuming time sens sensitive care is something that's going to happen very carefully and very thoughtfully and really very slowly uh, so we've been planning this for weeks uh, we know that there are people who had uh, procedures canceled or interventions canceled uh, in, in the early stages of this and we do recognize that people can't go without care forever uh, and so we're planning a slow re-entry for those uh, procedures, surgeries, etc. that really are time sensitive. Uh, can you give me a little explanation of what makes it a service time sensitive? Sure. Well, to the extreme, an emergency case, we've been doing emergency cases all along. So if you come in with an appendicitis, uh, you're going to be taken care of. Or if you come in and you've had a stroke, we, uh, we appropriately treat you and get you to the right place. Um, all those things have continued to happen all the way through. Something that might be sort of more urgent but not necessarily emergent uh, would be something that's causing considerable pain or functional limitations, inability to move about your house. Uh, and so those are the types of things that are a little bit more of a gray area and uh, those procedures are things that we are being given the, the go ahead to at least start to plan for how we can get those patients safely through our operating rooms, our hospital and, and back home again. Uh, doctor, can you give the folks at home a little idea of what goes into uh, resuming some of these services? How much planning goes into sure. it? Sure. Well, uh, unbelievable amounts of planning goes into even planning for one procedure. So every procedure that you, c you could imagine, uh, let's just take a surgery, a hernia surgery, for example, um, everything's going to take that much longer because patients are going to need to be masked and staff is going to need to have the appropriate protective equipment. Uh, the equipment itself, the surgical equipment, is, is uh, always sterile, but we, we take extra precautions to make sure that the operating rooms are safe and clean, uh, separating those patients in space and time from other patients who are coming through the operating room takes more time. And then there are all the other things associated with a patient who has a surgery, for example, the labs or diagnostic imaging that might be involved around that surgery. And then the recovery. Does a patient need to recover in the hospital? Do they need a rehab stay? Do we have the, do we have the staff? Do we have the, the capability to care for somebody long term? 
And we need to consider the fact that a patient, uh, we certainly don't plan on doing surgeries on anyone who is COVID positive, unless obviously it was an emergency situation. Um, uh, but there is a, uh, the, the idea that if you were an asymptomatic patient who did actually have COVID-19, a surgery itself might exacerbate your symptoms. And so if someone is coming in for a more significant procedure that would involve ventilation, intubation, uh, those patients will be tested ahead of time. So we're sure that we're doing only these procedures on COVID negative patients. Does that all go into how you prioritize a, a surgery? Absolutely. I mean, the, you know, number one priority are those people who absolutely can't wait. And then, uh, and then there's a, you know, sort of a cascading priority system that we're using to, to get people in safely to the hospital. Will uh, things like telehealth and services like that be delivered uh, still outside of the office? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's something that is continuing to grow and hopefully patients are finding it useful. I know some people have had some challenges with technology just like we always do, uh, but we're getting better every day and our numbers are increasing every day and that's not something that's going to disappear once this crisis You're is over. You're going to continue that service? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, will a COVID clinic remain open? COVID, COVID clinic will remain open for, for the foreseeable future. And uh, we're, we're considering it more of a respiratory clinic right now. So even if a patient might not have COVID but has some respiratory symptoms, they are likely to be seen in the COVID clinic uh, as opposed to being seen in their regular primary care office. Um, how will you keep your patients separated between the COVID and, and regular? Yeah, well, again, if, you, if you've been here, you know that you're greeted at the door, you're asked a list of questions, uh, and everyone is masked. Uh, we're, we're working on separating patients in time, uh, so trying to stagger appointments so there's not a rush of people who come in at 8 o'clock in the morning. We're separating them in space, so we don't expect people to wait in the waiting room, or if you do have to sit in the waiting room, you're sitting in chairs that are separated by a significant amount of distance, and you know, all, taking every precaution that we can to, to keep uh, sick people and healthy people separated for, from each other, but really everybody who's coming in is is, uh, is protected. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to this, Doc? I've run out of questions. Yeah, you have, sure, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are a couple of things, I guess, that I just want to emphasize. Um, number one, we st we're getting still uh, feedback from the community that people are afraid to come in. And there are people who are home with symptoms that really need care. Uh, and they feel like those, they're waiting it out, they're trying to tough it out like good Mainers. And we want people to know that we can care for you. If you have something that you would be seeking care for in regular times, give us a call. We'll figure out the best way to take care of you. We are able to, to care for anybody. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about just briefly is uh, there's a lot of talk about antibody testing and uh, different from the nasal swabs that we're able to do. Antibody testing is a blood test and Maine Health has not yet found a test that we can rely on. Um, there have been some hopeful uh, moves in the direction of an antibody test that's reliable, um, but unfortunately most recently the test that we were pinning our hopes on was not really as accurate as we hoped it would be. And we certainly don't plan to go forward with antibody testing until we have something that we truly believe in. So, uh, so we've gotten a, a lot of calls from patients. Uh, they're, they are understandably frustrated, uh, but we're working hard and we don't plan on going forward with that until we're really convinced that we're doing the right thing. Uh, good stuff. Dr. Ross, I yeah. want to thank you for taking time out of your extremely busy day mm -hmm. to share your thoughts with the LCTV audience. And uh, these updates have been extremely helpful. And I want to thank you from, for all you've done. Great. Well, thank you, Larry. Thank you much. Okay. So I'm Larry Seidlinger for LCTV. And once again, we're down at the Lincoln Health uh, Miles campus. Uh, starting next week, folks, we'll be doing just one of these updates as we work our way out of this pandemic every Wednesday. At approximately noon, uh, you will see our update on what has happened at Lincoln Health. And we thank uh, Lincoln Health for all they've done to keep you updated. And hopefully, uh, we at LCT have done our part to bring these updates to you. So thanks again. I'm Larry Seidlinger for LCTV, and we'll see you next time.